Hello all, thanks for stopping by. For those that watched my first video on the Chant I Clear 2D570, I mentioned the Candom resistor was open. So what you see now is a schematic. It's not the exact schematic again for this particular radio, but the tube complement is the same, and the overall design itself is the same. So we'll reference this particular schematic. And I want to just work through how to replace and re-engineer the Candom resistor in this radio. Okay, here's the circuit we really want to be focused on. Let's remove the parts of the circuit here we don't need to be concerned about. And again, if you, if you look here at the schematic, we'll focus on this section here where we come in from our AC line input. We'll run through what's called the resistor cord in this series, again, which would be a Candom or ballast tube will run through the tubes themselves, which is in this case is the heater of the tubes, back through the switch, back to the other side of the AC outlet. So again, this is why they reference this particular set is having the heaters in series. Here's a spreadsheet that I put together. I think it captures most of the critical information on this particular radio and the design itself. Again, this is for the Chanti Clear 2D570. The input line voltage that appears to be referenced in most of the schematics is around 115 volts, and you can see that here. And above, you will see all the tubes that I just mentioned earlier, uh, this listed. I have my heater current and amps, as well as the total heater voltage string, which is 68.9 volts. And again, we'll reference that is uh, R3. Uh, below. I had mentioned my candom resistor in the radio was open and this is the particular resistor that was open. Again the exact resistance is not really called out since I don't have a schematic. Somebody had wired in a 170 ohm resistor but most of the schematics that I can find show line cords or other ballast tubes somewhere around 140 to 150 ohms. So I plugged in the 140 ohms. Now I did measure the resistor itself and if I look at this part of the circuit here, my particular radio, this chant I clear, uses two 6.3 pilot lamps in series and those particular pilot lamps are connected in parallel with the R2 resistor. So the actual resistor I have in line for R2 is 40 ohms, but again it will have an equivalent resistance of approximately 22 ohms in this case. The resistance which I have listed here is R3 and I also show it here at 230 ohms are all the tubes themselves and again the cold resistance of the tubes will read much lower and as the tubes heat up of course the resistance will get higher so this is an approximate resistance that we would see for the particular tubes noted above so let's take a look at the circuit of my radio. Again, I mentioned the line input voltage of 115 volts. Then we focus in on R1. The resistance itself, again, approximately 140 ohms. That creates a voltage drop of around 41 volts and the power or wattage requirements for that particular section of the candom or power resistor that I will use to replace this would be 12.6 if I were going back with the same design. Now for this part of the design here, again I'm looking at my pilot lamps which are in series but they're in parallel with the R2 resistor. So the R2 resistor itself in the design of the radio measures right at 40 ohms but the equivalent resistance is around 22 Again, when I put the series resistance in parallel with that particular resistor. Now R3, again I'd already mentioned the 230 ohms of resistance across the tube heaters themselves. And again you can see here we're able to actually drop the voltage by 67.4 volts, which is almost 
a mirror of the 68.9 of the heater voltage and that's the end game that we're trying to achieve. Let's take a quick look at the uh, modified radio design that I'll be using. All the information on the tubes themselves, that being the heater current and amps, and the heater voltage and AC remains the same. What does change is my line input voltage. You see I raised it by 5 volts, went from 115 to 120. In addition, I've placed a 1N 5408 in the circuit design. That will reduce the voltage. And as you can see here, the R1 resistor now is lesser value, as well as the power consumption and the wattage requirements for that particular device. R2 stays the same. It's unchanged. And the same thing holds true for R3. So this modification will be quick, simple, and easy. To recap, I'll install the 1N5408 diode. In addition, R1 becomes a new resistor, again 30 ohms or so. And R2 will be replaced. That's part of the candom resistor and I don't want to leave it in the circuit. You will also notice I've got an asterisk below. I typically take my power or wattage requirements based on the design and multiply that by two to three times or more. Again, I want to make sure that I transfer the heat out of the cabinet and not put additional strain on the uh, resistor itself. For those that watched the video, I appreciate you doing so. Hopefully there was some value added. I know for me, I go back years ago, I struggled in this area, didn't have a good understanding. So hopefully this quick overview helps somewhat in that area. So stay tuned. I'll start tackling the de-rusting, then we'll get into the electrical restoration, and I'll share more updates on this Chanti Clear Radio from the early 30s.